Hey, I'm Sarah Gonzalez. Welcome to the news and why it matters. Glenn, what was the top story for you? Real refugees and what it means to be a refugee. Right. I assume you mean climate refugees because we're all going to die because of the climate and I'm going to tell you why. Oh, okay, good. Mm -hmm. All right, Andrew. Regime change at medieval times. <laughs> ah! I can't Obviously wait. Obviously top story. That yeah. should be the top story. Yes. You should beat me on that one because... <laughs> Can't wait. I, I go to middle immediate little time, so oh my kid. I, I might do a foreign correspondence report from that since it's in Dallas. Yeah. <laughs> Just drive over, <laughs> put into my taxes. Uh, before we get into all of that, I want to thank our sponsor, iTarget Pro. Uh, it is the best way to learn how to how to use your weapon is to dry fire, which is what iTarget Pro does. Okay, yeah. So it's it's uh, the best way for trigger control. And that is something that unless you're a, a shooter. You just think it's aim and, you know, which eye am I using and pull, but it is actually trigger control. You know your own gun. Yeah, but you have to also know, I mean, the slower you pull the trigger, yeah. you need to know, you know, you have to be comfortable with pulling that trigger. My trigger is a really long pull. Is it? Yeah. What kind of gun do you have? A 380. It's like, what it's... What kind of gun it, is a 380? I mean, there's, what, what kind, what is it? It's an M&P Smith so & Wesson. A, okay. Yeah. All right. But it's, I mean, it's way longer than you think it is. So this has been amazing for me because yeah. every time I go and shoot, I always am like, oh, I feel like I'm pulling too hard. And now I'm way yeah. more comfortable once with you it. Get, once you just have the trigger, you don't need to spend all the money on ammunition. Yeah. Once you really have that trigger down, and this makes it into, uh, uh, it makes your living room into a shooting range, which is great. <laughs> Except you're not actually shooting. <laughs> oh, crap. You're not supposed to put bullets in it, too? <laughs> I keep shooting my iPhone. I don't know, <laughs> yeah, why. I don't know why. <laughs> it's fantastic. Yeah, anyone who owns a gun should have this in their household. You can go to iTargetPro right now and get free shipping and save 10% if you use promo code NEWS. That is iTargetPro.com. All right, Glenn, real refugees. We are on the winning side. And for the very first time, I can say that with real confidence because I think the left has so, and the media, has so overplayed this hand that it's becoming ridiculous. Because as real struggles, you have to remember, we, we're not a country that's struggling. We haven't really struggled. 2008 was hard. People are going to struggle with the job losses at GM. They're going to struggle, and it's going to be bad. But that's one community or a couple of communities. We're not a nation that has really struggled in a long time. So we have been looking for things to be pissed off about. We've been looking for the, oh, my gosh, the plight that you have had because you were half Irish and, you know, half cockapoo and nobody wants an Irish cockapoo in class, all of that crap. We've, we've invented all of these things to be, you know, held back by. We're refugees. You look at the border. Those are not refugees. Those are people who are having a hard time. People who have lost their job with GM, they're going to have a hard time finding a job too. I can relate to that. I can have passion and I can have compassion for that. But it's not a refugee. So some might not be true too. I think some of it might not be true. Will find jobs. Right. So when you, but that's a human struggle. Right. Of that's course. a human struggle. Universal human struggle. What is not a universal human struggle is being crucified, being set on fire, being beheaded. Or yesterday, there was a woman. She is a, a Uyghur in China. Now, Uyghurs, China is a very interesting place because China has, um, is very racist. You have to be a certain kind of Chinese to yeah. be considered Chinese. Han, Han Chinese. Yes. So the Han, yeah, you've been over there. Mm -hmm. The Han Chinese if you're not Han Chinese, you literally, it's like 1950. You can't, it, they, you know. They, they, for, for Uyghurs, they've, um, they've done biometric data, I think, on all of them. Yes, all of them. Um, and, I mean, like, like literally all of them, there are, there are re-education camps right now yeah. um, that are, I mean, just straight up Orwell. Uh, yeah, they're. So, they're so, so they are literally tagging people. Uh, these Uyghurs are the first. Christians are happening as well. Um, but they are literally tagging. With, with systems that Hitler could have only dreamt about. These Uyghurs will be gone. So yesterday, there was a woman who came. She escaped. She had been arrested how many times? Three, four, five times in China. Mm -hmm. And she was brought into one of these concentration camps. There are now two million people in these concentration camps in China. Re-education. Yeah, sorry. Um, <laughs> two million people. 
So she escaped. She got here, and she was she gave a talk in in Washington. Haven't seen it anywhere. She described that she was taken in, and it's like V from Vendetta. She her head was shaved. Uh, they they uh, interrogated her for four straight days without any sleep, nonstop. Uh, they would beat her. They got to the point to where they were giving her electric shocks until she was foaming at the mouth. Um, and the last thing she would remember before she would pass out is, what was it, Uyghur is, Uyghur, it's a crime to be yeah, a Uyghur? It's a crime to be a Uyghur. Okay, so, and that was the happy stuff. Then they made her drink some white liquid that made her bleed from every orifice in her body. She's no longer having menstrual, a menstrual cycle. They may be... They may be sterilizing all of these Uyghurs, which probably they are. No one in the press was talking about this today. Why is that? That is a real refugee. Asia Bibi, that is a real refugee. Why is the president not using both of those examples today and saying, look, we do, we are a compassionate people. Here's a Catholic in Asia Bibi who's in Pakistan who her and her family are going to be killed if they're not gotten out of Pakistan. The Pakistani Supreme Court said that her trial was a farce. She was in jail for nine years. She, there was no reason to hold her in jail. The radical Islamists want her dead because she's a Catholic who will not confess her sins, Inquisition. Then you have a Muslim, a Uyghur, in China, we should be saying we welcome refugees. We are a place that will be a place where you can come. Poor, tired, huddled masses yearning to breathe free. It's those two examples, not what's happening here. This is a farce, and we're on the winning side because people are watching this, and they know. They know. I don't care who you are. They know that's not right, what's happening on the border. And if someone will just start talking about the actual cases and America actually lives up to its promise and its charter, we win. We win. We become the country, or maybe perhaps remain the country, that we were designed to be. A place where true refugees would have a shelter from the storm long enough for them to get back up off uh, onto their feet and make the life that was destined for them. That's what we should be doing. Libertarian Andrew, care to weigh in? Uh, it was a, a wonderful and impassioned speech that I very much enjoyed. <laughs> um, I think part of this, uh, to, to, to just get uh, a little bit less um, powerful in my rhetoric, uh, I mean, part of it might be when we're talking about just what the definition of a refugee is. Um, the folks that are along the border... Um, Either way, they're fleeing corruption, they're fleeing crime, they're, they're, they're mobsters that want to get them, they're, they're fleeing poor economic things. So regardless of what they're called, I, I would like to modify law in order to let them in if they're safe. Uh, and, uh, you know, so, I, I agree with you about yeah. the Uyghurs and everybody else. Those are, those are legitimate refugees. But So here's the thing. Here's, I think our only difference is this, Andrew. Um, and I don't even think it's a difference. I, I am for loosening the, or, or making it easier to come here, mm -hmm. because too many people, I mean, we have a guy from Ireland who is a born American. He, he, he loves this country. He sticks out like a sore thumb over in Ireland. We have a job for him. He cannot get a visa over here to work in America. That's ridiculous. It should be easier for people to come here and work and change their life, but not this way. Not this way. And so my point on, on Asia Bibi and also this woman in China is why are we cowering and saying, no, we're not racists. No, no, we, we're, we're not xenophobes. Let's prove it. Here's a Catholic and a Muslim. Here's a Pakistani woman and a Chinese woman. They both need our help. Let's help them. Those are easy. And that then when we do that, that's the easy one. When we do that, then say, okay, now listen, there is a system. And if you are in trouble, we will help you. But you've got to be in trouble. Yeah. I mean, I think uh, that's been a mistake that's been made over a long period of time by conservatives and people who, you know, 
care about border security is to make the issue about being anti-illegal immigration instead of making it pro-legal immigration. You know, I mean, it's a real, I mean, we, I, you know, we talk about this as it's like, you know, the United States is essentially an all-star team from around the world. All the people with the balls to get in ships and like come over here and leave their families and leave their familiar surroundings, come over here and they cheat. Just, just, just that is more than a lot of people in America will ever risk. And like, if you're willing to do that and you want the American experience, that's only going to make our country better. So I agree with you. And think of the balls it takes to go from Honduras at 16, 17 years old mm -hmm. on your own and walk that distance to go here. I have, that's great. Yeah. You've done something Americans probably wouldn't do. Okay, that's and good. Americans won't walk to the grocery store. I know that. <laughs> I know that. But now let's do one more thing. Do it right. Yeah. Yeah. Do it right. You can't flee corruption while bringing corruption with you. Uh, I want to move on to uh, climate change is going to kill all of us. Yes, we are, are going to die. Um, you will die most likely from something related to the 0.9 degree Celsius temperature rise over the past century. Um, Did you say 900 degree rise? Uh, no, 0.9 degree oh. Celsius. Stu, oh, Celsius. Mm -hmm. okay. It is. I just want to make sure that if people aren't saying, hey, that's, what, that's a Fahrenheit what, number. What, what is that in inches? Uh, yeah, it's <laughs> four, yeah, I think that's four. Uh, four, 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 yeah, four, 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 imperial yes. foot. So <laughs> I thought that we were all supposed to die already from this, that it was... Well, yeah, there's no way to turn back There was back no now. way to turn back And now there's really... 2014. There's really no way to turn back now. Right. Uh, well, why are, are we really talking scared. about it? Well, I'm, I'm fascinated by it. I mean, look, you know, the, there are... Some people who really think this is real. I think there's a large group of people who, um, and, and I, I don't, I hate being too general with this, but like there's a lot, there's a group of people who don't care if it's real and like the idea that they can advance uh, their chosen policies um, mm -hmm. on this on the back of climate change. I think you know someone like Al Gore, I believe, falls into that category. That's separate from a scientist who I think is trying to do. Um, you know, a lot of them are trying to do you know, the best their best they can to try to understand a really and difficult. I think a problem. lot of people who believe yeah. in. Not, I hate to say, don't believe in climate change or do believe in climate change. Climate is always changing. Yes. Right. Um, so to to say that it's not happening is not not the right statement. But those who believe that what we do about it. Yeah. Many of those people also have good intentions. And that's a, it's an interesting thing, and you've brought this up many times over the years, Glenn. Like, we do not live in a society in which um, a, 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 some random expert gets to design the policy for the country. This is not, uh, what was the book you always used to blab about? Uh, the one about... Philip Drew, Administrator. Philip Drew, Administrator, where it was a president who, i just going to pick all the best people from all the best industries, and they'll just make all the rules. I'll just admit I'm an administrator. You'd love this. You'd love it. I was it. about to say, you know, they, they, they tried city. that in the Soviet Union, yes, actually. Yes, exactly. Getting, so all, this was getting all the smart technocrats to run everything, and it didn't pan out. No. This was Woodrow Wilson's favorite book. Oh, God. Philip mm. Drew, Administrator. It's free online. You should read it. It's a novel. It's amazing. And then, this, this, is, this isn't satire? This no, is like this is Oh, yeah. it's, it's it was like their horrible dream. Horrible read, but because it's just like ridiculous. Well, it was but their dream. It was their dream. And Woodrow Wilson tried to execute it. Yes. in many ways while he was in office. I mean, it was something real and like playbook. Like, and there, there's just that attitude now that like if a scientist says something, like they might even be right, but that it's still we hire people to decipher the information and apply it as far as policy. They are essentially policy experts in theory, even though you can't tell it a lot of times. Um, so I'm, I'm fascinated by this this uh, this conversation around this report. Um, we have a couple clips from CNN, uh, an interview. CNN decided to bring on one of the scientists who was actually involved in creating the report. Okay, one of uh, I want to make clear this is one of Donald Trump's people. Oh, this is this is a really frustrating because they keep referring to him as. His people. I, right. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm probably going to be more on the climate change as a problem side of the table, I think. However, I will say that in terms of media coverage, I agree, because they're like, can you believe it? His own people. And I'm like, well, these are just, these are just administrators that are right. always this, there, this, right? This, they're not, they, they had to prepare. They were preparing this document during the Obama administration. Right. And it's been, it's, it comes out every few years. It's a climate assessment report. It's legally required to come out. It's, it's, it's by bureaucrats that were in the system. They started it under Obama. And I love the idea that, like, oh, it's his people. Like, he, of course he should trust them. There's, like, this implied idea that, like, he hired these people. He's, he said he's, these guys are the experts. The, 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 the deep state people that they're right. talking about. Yeah. Yes. But it's the exact opposite, right? Like, I mean, it's, it's you know, if, you, if he picked his own people, you'd be on television complaining that he picked his own people. Mm -hmm. right? Like, I mean, they wouldn't like that solution either. It has nothing to do with Trump. It's, it's, it's a report that comes out. And, and, again, he was hired as president of the United States. 
in part to deal with issues like this. If you don't like the way he's dealing with that, you should totally elect somebody else next time. Um, but he is the president of the United States, and whether this report says whatever it is, it's his job to decipher that into some level of policy as, as far as his constitutional limits go. So Thank before you. we get to that next point, because yeah. that is important. And we are running out of time. Uh, can we watch this? Yeah, yeah, we have time. Yeah, let's watch it. Catherine, are you just rolling in the dough? Is that why you're doing this? You're just cashing in? Listen to the attitude. <laughs> rolling on the floor laughing is more like it. I got paid zero dollars to write this report. My, my salary would have been exactly the same if I had or hadn't. And if I were studying astrophysics like I used to, I'd probably get exactly the same salary as well. The reality is, I found, is that people often accuse us of doing what they would do themselves in our position. If we just cast our eye down the richest corporations in the entire world on Wikipedia's list, the vast majority of those owe their wealth to fossil fuels, so therefore they have a vested interest in maintaining the status quo as long as possible. Oh, disappointed face out there. So just to follow that and review real quick, the, th the accusation from people on the right is the scientists are doing this because there's an industry around it and there are a lot of people are making money off of it and, and they're Which motivated by the wrong thing. And certainly it's just different than Exxon. It's different. It's, it's different. Just, it's true. However, her, first of all, her question is completely leading. This, this is supposed to be an actual interview where you're trying to get to a question. You, you can't, oh, I guess you're just rolling in the dough. She's just mocking the entire premise. And then her response is the exact same thing as the accusation against her, which is, I'm not the one who's in this for the money. They're the ones that are in this it, for it, the it, money. It also looked, at, it looked scripted. I was watching her eyes, and she's looking down. Like, it, like I, I suspect that, that was pre-written. Yeah, well, it probably was. I like um, conspiracy theorists. I like it, though. Yeah. I like the conspiracy can I, can, I, can I swing back in a minute in, in overtime? Uh, yeah, 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 let's, let's, well, is, do you have more? I mean, there is another clip okay, there. Let's, let's take a break, and then we'll watch the other clip when we come back. I'm just I, Because I think you think we're saying something that we're not. Yeah, that's yeah. so true. Possible. Yeah. 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 So, okay. Uh, before we get back into climate change, I want to thank our sponsor, Ribiazone. Uh, it is, of course, the holiday season, and there may be some of us at the table who may tend to overeat not during me. the holiday season. Not he, Glenn said not, not him, me. so it's not him. I only drink eggnog during the holiday season. That's all I do. I do not eat or drink. That's Just eggnog. Disgusting. It's eggnog. I love <laughs> eggnog. It's a good diet. But it's got to be about 1,500 calories. Yeah. Yeah. Just, yeah, just drinking glass. liquid okay. fat with sugar. So, mm -hmm. so I have the product for you, Andrew. Right. Oh, okay. Yes. Uh, Ridizone will help you okay. either get those extra pounds off during the holidays or just boost your metabolism so that you can at least maintain. So, so this is you a, this just is not a, gain 30 pounds so over the holidays. So this is an supp supplement that yes. I can take? So you, <laughs> what you do is you take the Ridiazone and then just drink the whiskey straight. Yeah. <laughs> It's actually, uh, That's the, a great plan. My understanding is it's a, it's a good molecule for megnog, right? Uh, oh, right, yeah. No olive oil. Olive it's, it's, oil. It's the nog. The nog is the healthy nog. That's yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but um, it's, it's helped me. It's done wonders for me maintaining after I lost a bunch of weight a, a long time ago. Um, so you can order now at ridizone.com. That's R-I-D-U-Z-O-N-E.com. Use promo code TheBlaze for 30% off a three-month supply. That's like $1.39 a day. That's super cheap so that you can either lose weight or maintain. There's no reason not to do it. Ridizone.com. Stu, you were in the middle of the uh, climate change 
clip. Debacle. Yes, and uh, Andrew, being new here, doesn't know that climate change is one of my pet uh, obsessions. Yeah, you guys are um, going to so, No, it's, it's, it's a fun <laughs> one. I like talking Good about warning, it. Warning, he has I, done well, all the research. Yeah. He's a numbers freak. Oh, okay. Well, well, the, no, I, mean, I, just, I just wind up ranting, and so I'm, I rant too long sometimes about it. Um, let's watch another clip here. This is from uh, CNN, and I'm, I was fascinated by this interview. Again, this is a scientist, and, and I will... There's some credit you would give to actually bringing on a scientist from the report because so far the coverage has been, why did he release this on Black Friday has been mainly the conversation <laughs> this, around this. There's Muffets they bring on. They do like, all the time. <laughs> um, so uh, anyway. So I she, like the old guys at the balcony. <laughs> Those guys are, I don't know, but it stinks. <laughs> Bernie Sanders is delightful. <laughs> uh, but I, listen to this. I mean, this question is just, I think this is the one with the question that is just a tad pathetic. Listen. And so, I mean, since you're so steeped in this material, when you hear the president say he doesn't believe it, how does that make you feel? Aww. Aww. How does it, make you feel? it makes me feel frustrated because, again, you can say I don't believe in gravity, but if you step off the cliff, you're going down. So we can say I don't <laughs> believe climate is changing, she but is it's based on science. It's over 150 years old. And if we're making decisions that don't just affect us, but that affect hundreds of millions of people based on flawed or faulty information, the result is not going to be good. So, again, her two last two questions were, uh, you're rolling around in the dough, aren't you? And how does the president say, when he says something like that, how does it make you feel? I, why even have her on? Like, the she's a freaking scientist. Go into some of the science if you want to go into something. The press hasn't changed. That yeah. was, what's the most enchanted yeah. moment you've had as president? Actually, I mean, I, I just don't understand that approach. But, I mean, like, you know, and this is, I think, getting into the actual report a little bit. The gravity is... Um, uh, summary is such a poor one to me. I, mean, I can take this this plate of cauliflower and broccoli or whatever it is and drop it all over this building in a million different places, a million different times, and we will find it to fall at the exact same uh, rate over and over and over again. We can prove gravity exists very easily. Um, it, it, there has to be some um, uh, recognition of fallibility for human beings. And I think that is where when we go into these climate um, uh, arguments where we fall down a little bit too much when we're talking about them. Because Look, you can't, there is too complex a system to be able to run experiments on. Science is easily proven when you can run experiment on a, on a system over and over again. You can replicate that experiment. You can replicate the results. With the climate, they attempt to do this, and to their credit, they, they put amazing uh, models of the climate together to try to, to try to figure out what different inputs would, uh, you know, what the outputs would be after different inputs are entered. But again, they're human designed. They're not Reality, as we see, they they diverge from each other by multiple degrees, and and how much the effect is, um, and what they're asking us to do is to take their reports and implement mass um, control of economies all around the world to the tone of multiple trillions of dollars, um, and and that goes up and up and up and up to do things that we you know even when you look at their numbers and accept all of them as 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 fact, you're spending a massive amount to do almost nothing, um, and. The idea that there can't be another side to this or, or you don't believe in gravity or you're a climate denier, which is the same as a Holocaust denier, um, or you're just out there for the money. These are just rhetorical tools to avoid the conversation. And I think the conversation is important, even if everything they say is true. It's to, you know, it, there is a clear argument for what is the level of catastrophe we're actually facing? How, what is the best way to deal with it? Who is the best thing to do? Because it's always the, with them. It's always the government that is the one that needs to step in. Um, and, you know, what is the best? Is it adaptation? I mean, adaptation. Is it, you know, is it ge geoengineering? We talked to them, they're going to burn, you know, who knows? They're going to, there are new ideas to dim the sun. Oh my God. All of these ideas uh, can't be part of a conversation where you're calling the other person a Holocaust denier. There's just nowhere to go from there. And, you know, if they want people on the conservative side to look at this and take it seriously, like they say it's such a huge threat, they have to be able to approach it like, like they're dealing with adults, and they don't do that. And I, I do think the Republicans and conservatives at times use shorthand like it's a hoax, and that's not the right, I mean, it's not the right way to talk about this either. Um, so it, both sides are guilty of it, but the media is so in lockstep on this issue. They act as if you're an insane person if you don't want to spend multiple trillions of dollars on a problem. I don't see how you could possibly measure hundreds of years in advance accurately. I, I, I have to tell you, um, you know, I'm somebody who has taken steps myself for being more green, you know that we tried to make this studio, it pulls way too much electricity, but one of my goals was to make this a totally green facility, okay? Impossible with the technology we want to do today, but I wanted to send a statement, and you know what? 
we all do our part as long as you have the money. I don't want any money from the government or anybody else. Right. What it's not climate change that we that we're arguing here. It is the solution. They are creating models that are not accurate. They have not given us accurate predictions of what today is like when they said this 15 years ago. It's not playing out that way. Why would we spend all of this money? Now, are there things that we can do? Yes, there are. But electric cars, remember, electric cars were the things we had to do. Barack Obama stopped the hydrogen car for the electric car. The hydrogen car, I drove it. I drove I the that. GM this, this hydrogen the one that car. Just dribbles out water and like is yeah. It, it runs yeah, hang water. on. I think we have to. Yeah, take we, a break. yeah, we got it. We got to go. We'll be back. Yes, I mean, so I'm a climate and I start ranting and then. In a second. We're going to take this climate change conversation into overtime because I don't think the guys have gotten enough. No, we yet. haven't gotten it out yet. But uh, I want to remind everyone, the guys are going back out on tour. Yes. yes. Starts Friday? Friday in Tampa, Saturday in Orlando, and we would love to see you there. It's going to be a lot of fun. So go to glenbeck.com slash tour, get your tickets, and we will see you guys in overtime. Bring your SUVs, leave the car running while it's outside. Yes. <laughs>